This is rental car number 49 and today I'm driving the 2016 Dodge Grand Caravan RT. The RT was the most premium trim level of the Grand Caravan back in 2016. In 2017 they changed that up so now the top trim level is the GT but what's important to know here is that we're looking at the most premium version of the Grand Caravan. So that means you get 17 inch alloy wheels and you also get a 3.6 liter V6 engine that pumps out 283 horses. I think that's important to note because a lot of the minivans out there can feel kind of sluggish. But not the Grand Caravan. This V6 engine really does give you some decent acceleration which is nice when you're driving something, well, something as uncool as a minivan. And with that V6, you get some decent miles per gallon. This one gets 17 in the city and 25 on the highway, and you get a 20 gallon tank. Those are at least the official numbers. I generally do the same trip over and over again. It's 146 miles. And with this one, I only needed 5.5 gallons of fuel, which is pretty good. Typically, I need about six and a half to seven. All right, so that's my quick take on performance. Let's jump inside and take a look at the Grand Caravan. I have mixed feelings about the interior of this minivan. It doesn't feel quite as fresh as some of the other ones like the Kia Sedona, but there's definitely nothing wrong with it. It's a nice crisp interior. Now I do get a key fob with this one. It's a little bit weird, but it does include my favorite features which are remote buttons to control the doors. In other words, you just have to double tap on one of the icons and the door will automatically open or close for you. I cannot tell you how convenient this is, especially if you have kids. It's so nice to have. The key fob itself is, it's okay. I'm not a fan of this sort of weird key system you have on the front right here. I would prefer a true keyless key fob, but you know what? It works fine. It turns and starts the engine just like a normal key, so there's not a whole lot to complain about. You also get a nice sturdy steering wheel that it's a little thicker than normal, especially on minivans, which I kind of like. And you get a standard buttons right here. This controls the digital screen and the gauge cluster so you can navigate through all the features. And then right here are Dodge's cruise controls. These are high quality buttons that work great. I had no problems with them when I drove this car. And then above the steering wheel, you have a nice size gauge cluster with two big gauges and a small digital screen in between. The gauges are nice and big. They're super easy to view both in day and nighttime hours. And the digital screen, it's not the best out there, but it's a nice size and there's a couple of nice menus that you can cycle through to see some information about the car. To the left of the steering wheel, right on the door, you get the standard controls to control the windows and adjust the mirrors and all that stuff. What I want to mention is you get this additional control right here. Now this controls the very furthest back windows and it allows them to open just about three inches. I really like this because it's a way to sort of get some airflow through the vehicle without making a lot of wind noise while you're driving down the highway or having windows open where a kid could potentially drop something out onto the road. I actually use these quite a bit and I wish they were included on the other minivans out there. Below the driver's controls for all the windows and mirrors, you do get your parking brake. It's just a standard push pedal brake. I'm not a huge fan of this. A lot of the other manufacturers have sort of gotten rid of this pedal system and gone to a, a button that's right by the gear shift. That's kind of what I prefer, but this pedal works fine. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. Shifting your gaze over to the right, to the center console, that's where you're going to find the touchscreen. This is the one feature that I think the Dodge Grand Caravan is way below the competition. There's no nice way to put this. This is a horrible touchscreen. Connecting your phone via Bluetooth is it's really difficult and navigating through these menus just doesn't feel very intuitive. Overall, this really feels like a 10 or maybe even a 15 year old screen on a car, something that I really, really wish Dodge would update. Now you do get a rear facing camera that automatically activates when you put the minivan in reverse. It works great, although the quality of the camera is pretty questionable. It's pretty grainy, especially compared to some of the other minivans in this class. Sorry to be so negative. I just, I really like the Grand Caravan and it's disappointing to see how bad this touchscreen is. Directly below the touchscreen, you get your climate controls. These are actually pretty decent. I like that you get digital readouts for the temperature, that you have controls for both the front and back of the vehicle, and that everything has a large button that's really easy to reach. And then moving further down below the climate controls, you get a nice size storage area right here with a DC power port built in. 
I really like the location of this storage area. It's perfect for your cell phone or your toll pass or other odds and ends, and I used it quite a bit on my trip. And then continuing to move back, you get two nice sized cup holders and then a second storage area right here, which seems to be designed for change and other odds and ends. Honestly, I didn't use this area at all during my trip, but it's a nice sized storage area that should come in handy. And there's even more storage areas over on the passenger side of the vehicle. Up top, you get this small sort of cubby hole uh, that you can store some odds and ends. And then you do also get the standard glove box where it usually is right here by the passenger's knees. Both of these areas are a pretty decent size and I think you could easily store some snacks or other odds and ends that you might need for your kids. All right, so let's just keep moving right and let's talk about the side view mirrors. I like blindside detection indicators on all minivans. I think you just need that extra safety equipment when you're driving around family members, but you don't get it on this car, and that's a little bit disappointing. To my knowledge, it's not even an available option that you could pay extra for, at least not on the 2016 version. All right, let's jump back into the vehicle and sort of shift your gaze up above the center console. That's where you get your sunglass holder, which also includes this rear view mirror right here that allows you to see the kids in the back. It's pretty useful. Though it feels kind of cheap, so it's hard to use, I found that getting it to go to the right position was, well, it took a little practice. And then above that area, you get four buttons to control all of the different doors on the minivan. So just like the key fob, you can reach up and touch the corresponding button, and then the door will magically open for you. I know I've already geeked out on this feature before, but I just can't stress how convenient it is, especially when you have young kids, to be able to press a button and open the door. It really is a great feature. I also decided to test out these doors and just to see what would happen if I left my arm right there. I've actually never done this before, but it's nice to see that there are sensors on the door so it can't close and pinch your kids' hands and fingers. You just get a light little tap, and then the door opens back up all on its own. And then you also get a button to control the rear door as well, so you can press a button, and just like the side door, you can open up the trunk space with just a push of a button. I really like this, especially when I'm unloading groceries. You just push the button, exit the car, and then by the time you get to the back, it's already open and ready to go. All right, so let's jump in the back and kind of take a look around, because there's actually a lot of really great features back here as well. And one of my favorites is right here, directly behind the door. If you'll peek around this little corner, you'll see there's actually a three-pronged power plug right here for you to connect all of your gadgets. I love this. I wish every car had one. It's a huge convenience. All right, so let's talk about chairs for a minute. Well, I guess seats is the right word. These captain's chairs are very comfortable. They come with two armrests, and you can configure them in a ton of different ways. So for example, you can recline it like you can with most of these chairs, but you can also slide it forward and backward to sort of play around with the leg room, which I like because there's plenty of leg room for the center uh, row passengers. I'm six feet tall, had plenty of space, but in the third row, it's a little bit more cramped. So just getting a couple extra inches is kind of a big deal. And then my absolute favorite feature about these captain's chairs is they collapse completely into the floor and can disappear. Collapsing the seats is fairly easy. You have to start by pushing the front row seats, your passenger and driver seats, all the way forward to make room for the seat to fold forward and collapse. The controls up front are electronic, so this can actually take quite a while to get the seat in the right spot. But once that's done, the rest is pretty easy. First, you have to pull up on this small mat in the floor to sort of open up the, I guess, hole, for lack of a better word, where you're gonna stick the seat. So this space is designed for the seat to fold into, but you could also use it for almost anything else. It's actually a large storage area, so I think technically you could, well, you could put tons of stuff down here, especially if your kids are involved in sporting activities. All right, but back to collapsing the seat. All you have to do is pull up on this lever you see on the side, and the seat folds down all by itself. You just have to give it kind of a gentle little nudge into the opening, and the seat folds down all the way. After that, you just place the cover back over the seat, replace the floor mat, and the chair has completely vanished. So this is what it looks like when both seats are collapsed into the floor. I actually like to keep the minivans in this configuration, especially for road trips, because you can keep all of your coolers and stuff right here, and then the kids have easy access to it while you're driving. And here's the third row of seats. Uh, there's space for three adults. The leg room is it's pretty good. I mean, it's a little bit tight back there, but generally you're going to have kids sitting back in the third row. They do not adjust, 
but I think it's worth noting that there is some space under the seat, so you can store some additional items right there. Up on the ceiling, the third row passengers do get dedicated vents up here, along with uh, some hooks to hang your coat or jacket. And then along the center of the ceiling, you do get these four or five storage areas for your passengers to use. Now I have to be honest, the plastic on these feels a little bit cheap, and I'm not really sure how much stuff you can actually store in these compartments. Probably perfect for CDs, DVDs, and books, but I can't imagine you can get anything else up here at all. And then directly above the middle row seats, uh, your passengers do have their own climate controls. There's no digital readout here, but there are dials to control the temperature and the fan. There is no DVD player standard with the RT configuration. You can pay an extra thousand dollars to have it installed, but in my opinion, well, that's a pretty steep price for a DVD player. All right, so let's keep talking about these third row seats because there's a little bit more to them. If you exit the vehicle and go in the back, you'll see that you get a really decent sized storage space back here that goes down pretty deep. The reason for that is that the back seats actually collapse into this section. So you just have to pull on these four little tabs. It's a really gentle tug and you can feel the mechanism sort of click in place. But after you pull all four tabs, you have successfully pulled the seat down into that opening. This is actually super easy. I'm doing this one-handed while holding a camera and I was easily able to get these seats to collapse in a mere matter of seconds. So I really like this because you can collapse both the captain's chairs in the center row and the back seat and then completely clear things out so that you have a ton of storage space. I like this because you can transform this minivan into a passenger van into a cargo van that you can use to haul furniture or move apartments or anything you need. All right, so I didn't cover every square inch of this minivan, but I hope it gave you a really good look at all the features on the RT. So after driving this minivan for about two days and putting about 146 miles on it, I'm going to give it three stars. Look, I love the Grand Caravan. This is a solid minivan with a lot of great features, but that touchscreen is just horrible. And I think the interior could use a nice refresh to bring it up to the level of the Chrysler Pacifica and the Kia Sedona. All right, so that's it. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you join me next time when I rent my 50th 5-0 rental car.